because I believe that life is one of the most important things, one of the most incredible things that God created. Think about it. Light allows us to do what? Everything. Without it, you wouldn't know your mother's face. You wouldn't um, see your dog leaping in the air when he chases a squirrel. And you couldn't even see the bright, the bright green light that leaves. And I couldn't read without the light. A rippling in the breeze against the blue sky. Look at the light. Look how it shines. It gives us detail about things that we can't see in the dark. See that thing right there? Can't see that without the light, can we? <coughs> yeah. Well, um, did you know that light travels at 300,000 kilometers every single second? Like nothing else in the world, in the universe, travels as fast as light does. It's like the front porch light on that's at home at your grandma that's on in your grandma's house that lets you know you're safe. Think about the Christmas tree lights that you see in the window that lets you know that it's time to celebrate Christmas. And there's nothing like a campfire on a dark night to stir a sense of adventure. Now here's the really cool part. Jesus says that all of us, you and me, are like what? Okay, let's say the ghost sound is clear. All of us are like what, Jayla? You said it. Somebody said it, Timothy. Oh, it's like light. We're like light. Okay? And I'm going to kind of tell you a story about that. One afternoon on the mountainside, Jesus was talking to a big crowd of people. And this is what he told them. He said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill can't be hidden. Also, people do not give light to a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in front of others. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will praise your Father who is in heaven. The more we act like Jesus, the more we shine his light into a dark world. Can you be a light, boys and girls? Yeah. How can you be a light? What can you do to be like Jesus? Okay. What can you do for other people that shows your light? Exactly. You can play with lonely friends. You, can you do the dishes for mom? Is that showing your light? Yes. Okay, doing something kind, giving someone a sandwich that doesn't have any food. Wash the clothes. Washing the clothes for mom or daddy. That is shining your light. And God wants you to use your imagination and be creative and think about ways that you can be light. And today I'm going to spotlight some people who are letting their light shine. Okay, so here we go. Be real still, guys. Pay attention. <coughs> <laughs> I want to tell you about a man named Tad. See, Tad used to work for a big company that was hired to help clean up after disasters like storms and floods. But Tad started to see that it took a long, long time for big companies to move into place and start helping people. So all by himself, he put together a small crew of men. They started to go places as soon as something bad happened, like the day after. They came before anyone else, and they could get to the tiny towns that other people forgot about. Tad and his team had big machines to help lift and cart away debris and remove huge fallen trees. But more than that, they care about the people who lose their homes and their towns. Tad sits down with them and listens to their stories. He becomes their friend. And that's how Tad has used his imagination to shine his light. I'd like to tell you about a kid named Zach. When Zach was just seven, he decided that he wanted to help kids that were left homeless after a hurricane. So he took his little red wagon and went to all the neighbors asking for supplies to help. He ended up collecting 27 truckloads. After that, Zach created a group called the Little Red Wagon Foundation 
to help build homes and collect supplies for kids who are in need. Every year, he does a long walk to raise money. And I mean a really long walk. One year, he walked all the way from California to Florida with his mother and sister. It's pretty amazing to think of. Zach knows that you're never too young to use your imagination to shine your light and do good for others. education teacher and one day she found out that one of her students couldn't go skating because he was a foster kid and didn't have anyone to pick him up. Jackie talked to her husband Eric and her three kids who were six, seven, and eight and they decided to give a home to foster kids and you know what? <coughs> Since then they have invited 30 foster kids into their homes and adopted nine more kids. Now they help other families who want to be foster families. Now they help other families who want to be foster families or adopt children. Because Jackie and her family used their imaginations when one boy couldn't go skating, now hundreds of children have safe homes. They help, they're helping lots of people to shine their light. Now these are all pretty big, incredible stories, aren't they? But each one started with just a small idea, one single thought, one little step. A bright shining light can grow from a tiny flame. Each single person in this room can shine their light in a unique and special way. Think about how you can use your imagination, boys and girls, to shine your light and do more good. Let's say our bottom line with, um, together. Say it with me. Use, use your, your imagination, imagination to do more good. good. Okay, you can say that a little louder. Use, use your imagination to do more good. good. Okay, let's say a prayer together. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for letting us be lights to reflect who you are in the people around us. Please help us to use our imagination to find creative ways that we can shine. Um, Lord, we just want to shine your light and to do more good. We love you, and it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 